What you're looking at here is the uh, indirect lighting behind cold molding in the art room that I've been uh, putting together for my daughter out in my pole barn. It turned out pretty well. It's very nice. Um, I like it. She likes it. And that's all I can say. That's the uh, the west exposure to my barn. You can see the sunset. Looks, uh, it's got a nice view. I think that's why she wanted this corner of the barn for her art studio because it looks out over the woods and the fields. Now this has got a nice hard edge. This is a, a dual strip LED. It does not dim. It's got a high and low setting. And you can see that nice hard edge um, for the low. And then when you turn on the high, it, it smooths it out a bit, adds more light. It's kind of hard to represent that on the video. But here's how I did it. I took a, uh, a 2 by 3 and uh, I cut a profile into it to mount the cold molding and the trim and the lights to. Now, 2x3 might sound pretty tacky for the original or the base molding, but it's perfectly suitable. For less than one inch of it, it's actually going to be exposed. What you have here, you can see the end stock of it. The upper edge is cut at 45 degrees. That's where the lights will go. This is a 22 degree edge, and that's actually going to be exposed. The other two surfaces, the larger of the two parallel surfaces, are going to mount on the wall. And... Right on that edge right there is where the cove molding will actually be attached. Underneath it, it'll get a piece of internal inside quarter round. So as you can see, there's only going to be maybe an inch of it exposed. And once it's finished off, it'll look nice. Now here's a little mock-up. It's mounted uh, eight inches down from the ceiling. And this is uh, the inside corner molding that will go underneath it. Just to dress it up. And remember, this is all about looking pretty. It may be a pole barn, but I still want it to be nice. Now what you're looking at here is vertical blinds. Um, from a from the lab, I, I, I had some leftover blind stock when we put blinds in the in the tall windows and it's got this nice radius to it. The problem is it's kind of off-white, not very reflective. So what I did is I took and sprayed it with a chrome or aluminum finish paint to make it shiny and, and more reflective. And I'm going to mount it on that 45 degree angle. Now, the beauty of that is these uh, LEDs, I can position one at, at 45 degrees and then I can adjust the position of the other so that I get the right effect I want. So we just all we do is we uh, put a couple staples or nails into it. And then we stick the, uh, the LED strips. Now these strips are self-adhesive. They're not the waterproof ones. But even so, these, are, these things are notorious for not staying adhered to the surface. And I'll address that later. But for now, this is just a mock-up. And I want to show you how this is going to work. Okay, there you can see the light bouncing on the ceiling. Now once you put the cove molding on there, you can see it produces a sharper edge. All right. It's about 12, 13 inches out from the, the wall. And here we can measure it. I can show you where it's at. So it sticks out. That gives me a nice, sharp, defined edge. Now, this is only one strip. I'm going to put a second strip of lights up there. And they'll be controlled separately. I'm not putting them on a dimmer. I'm simply giving them a switch so you have a high and low beam, which is perfectly fine for this application. I'm not putting colored lights in. This is not a disco. This is an art studio. So you want the proper amount of light. So here I'm just playing with, with the cold molding and, and showing you the, where the light line is on the ceiling. Now this is the second strip of lights and this will be separately controlled. It'll have its own switch. And I can adjust them up and down on this uh, piece of plastic that radius so I can decide where I want the shadow and if you see on the wall right there there's a second shadow that I can cast on the ceiling and what I decided that was that the first shadow which should be about 12 to 13 inches the second shadow should be about 24 inches out now the first shadow is hard and defined 
very sharp. The second shadow is more gradual. But by using that curved radius, I, I have the flexibility to position them on the fly once I decide what I want. And this is the cove molding that I'm using for a mock-up, but it's not the final cove molding I wanted. So there's my uh, cut molding, or my, my base trim. There's a corner, and then of course we have the crown. Now this was just a piece of MDF. I ended up finding, finally using uh, pine finger joint pre-primed trim. It looks nice. I mean, like I said, and I, I guess this bears repeating, it's a pole barn. But this is the end result after uh, I put it all up. You can see the inside corner. There's a little one inch exposure of the two by three, and then you have the upper cove. Now, this is uh, inside my pole barn. You guys bear with me. I'm going to take you through my barn over the over the next year as I reorganize and reposition. Right now, I'm, I'm in and out so much, I don't really have time to properly organize my barn. It's just a great big building with everything stacked around, but that will happen. Now here, all I'm doing is I'm cutting a 45-degree a, a angle on a 2 by 3 I already cut the 20 degree angle on it. The uh, problem is I don't have video of that. It's, it's no big deal. You're going to see what I did in a second. Um, for some reason, the camera didn't record it. Probably it was my error. But you can see the lower angle is 22 degrees. The upper angle is 45. I will spare you the, uh, the tedium of cutting all these 2 by 3s up. Okay, now all I have to do is, is do a light sand on them and uh, just prep them for primer. Again, this is, this is not a fancy interior room of my home. This is my pole barn, but I still, I still want it to look reasonably nice. All I want to do is take off some of the, the sanding burrs and such and prep it for paint. And again, only one surface of this 2x3 is actually going to be visible once it's, once it's up on the wall. It's about one inch wide. So it's, it's really not a complicated or, or complex process. All I'm doing is smoothing out the wood, rep, prepping it for primer. And I have six of these. These are 2x3 by, by 8 foot. I had about a foot and a half left over when I was all done. That gives you kind of an idea of the dimensions of the room. If you've seen the other video of the girls uh, doing the drywall, I think I explained the dimensions. It's about eight and a half feet wide by 14 feet long. And this is just plain old drywall primer. Nothing fancy. It's what I had left over from painting the room. Just a nice coat on there and job done. We'll get all six of those things done and uh, once they're dry we can start putting them up on the wall. Okay, daughter showed up. She was doing homework. She finally came out, and uh, all we're going to do is use a little brad nailer, and we're going to tie them into the studs. I use uh, PL Premium uh, construction adhesive. Make sure it's nice and solid. I want you to notice the snow, okay? We have about 12 inches of snow right now out on the ground, and uh, just remember that. So anyway, here we are. We're just we're just attaching the uh, this base molding or this profile that sets all the dimensions for everything else. The goal of this project is I wanted to build this lighting for less than a hundred hundred and fifty dollars. I didn't want ridiculously expensive. It is still a budget item. And there we go. More PL Premium. You know that's uh, that's not PL Premium. That's uh, Subfloor adhesive is what I had. All we're doing is uh, we're just aligning the scarf joint, getting the two bys in there. And there's my daughter. Mm -hmm. Any questions? So we're getting around the last two pieces of the job. 
Now that wire sticking up with the outlet, that's where the, the uh, 12 volts comes up to run the lights. And I'll show you more detail on that in a little bit. All we want to do is attach it till the, the, the adhesive connects to the drywall and we're done. Last little piece, remember these are two by three by eight foot, so I had to fill in one little piece. Now here what I'm doing is I'm just using drywall mud to uh, smooth out the spots, the knots, the scratches, the nail holes, whatever. Um, it's on that one surface. There's the scarf joint. Remember, only one surface is gonna be visible once it's all trimmed out. So what I did is I sanded it, painted it, it's good. Now this is a silicone adhesive and I'm going to use this to hold the painted plastic radius that I'm using to mount the lights to. And just putting it on with some staples. The staples have probably been fine, but the adhesive guarantees it's not going to come loose. I just don't want to fuss with this later. 20 years from now I still want it to be stuck to the wall. I have other things to do than repair things. Now it's really important the uh, the original profile be absolutely level as it goes around the room. And it's equally important that this molding or this reflector is also level. If you don't have a nice level consistency, you're going to get odd light lines. And I don't want that. I want fairly good uniformity. And it, and it did turn out pretty well. I have the cardboard in the windows because the sun was so bright that day that uh, I couldn't film in the room. I suspect we're going to have a problem in the summer. I'm going to have to put some uh, tinting on the windows so it doesn't overheat in there. The barn's air conditioned, but still, that's going to. There's a lot of windows, and that southwest wall is going to really absorb the light through those windows. Okay, there it is. All the uh, reflector is installed. And we're ready to put the lights on. Now, I mean, that's a, uh, a 12 gauge speaker wire. It is perfectly well suited to carry the uh, four amps of electricity that these things, maybe five amps, yeah, you know, about five amps of 12 volt current. Um, so each one of those wires is going to carry about two and a quarter amps at 12 volts. It's actually overkill, but it's what I had on hand. Now these light strips, again, the, uh, the adhesive on these uh, LEDs is fairly uh, tacky, so it does stick well, but longevity is an issue. I, I don't want these things pulling away over time, and I suspect they probably will. Um, these were not high-end uh, LED strips, but uh, they were perfectly well suited. They're 5.5K. They give me good color rendering for, for drawing, so it'll be a good art studio light. But at the same time, um, they were fairly inexpensive. I think I paid uh, 350 a roll for them. Anyway, each... Each run gets three rolls of these, which is uh, 45 feet or what? Uh, no. Yeah, 15 meters. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, ballparking them there about a half an inch from the bottom edge. And that's easy to eyeball. You can look at that. Now you notice I'm, I'm pressing down between, as I run these things, I press them down with my fingers. And then I go back and press them again between the LEDs to make sure I got a good bond. But I am going to address the fact that I don't trust them and I'm going to add an additional adhesive. Now here's the end of it. And I'm getting ready to splice in the next one. Now I tried the little mechanical splices and I'm not a big fan of them. They were more trouble than they're worth. So what I did is I went in and got my soldering iron. And uh, I prefer solder for connections to be perfectly honest with you. 
So all I did was overlap the the uh, the splice points they have on all these strips, and all I'm going to do is bridge that point with a little solder on each the positive and negative, and uh, that will solve the problem. The LEDs will be electrically continuous. Now I can turn them on, and see there they are. Now the power supply I'm using to test these is only rated at 2 amps. These uh, strips I checked draw a little over 700 milliamps, about 7.1. Oh yeah, now this is this is the following weekend from when we originally put the, the wood up. Um, notice there's no snow out there. Yeah, 12 inches of snow melted in one week. Anyway, we go round and round and round, and it's just a process of repetition. Like I said, on the, each run, there's there's two courses of these lights, so we have three five-meter strips of LEDs. Actually, there's a, a little less than five meters. I think I cut off about uh, two feet at the end. But it's just a matter of, of bridging that connection with some solder, turning them on, and away they go. Like I said, that power supply hanging on the wall, that's a temporary power supply. It puts out two, two amps, if I remember right. I think two amps. And you're going to notice in a second what that actually accomplishes. While it does give me enough energy to run these LEDs so I can make sure they're working as I put them up, um, I feel comfortable putting them up and seeing them light up. Just like putting Christmas tree lights up, you don't Put the lights up and then see if they work you really want to put them on the tree while they're on so you can check to make sure that you have uh, a good reliable system anyway i've soldered them up now notice on the left side of the strip they're dim and on the right side where the power is injected into the strip it's nice and bright all you're doing is you're seeing that each one of these leds is absorbing a little bit of the current that the power supply can provide and the strip is actually drawing overall a little more current than it can provide. Now, so what it is, I actually hooked up the, the proper power supply for these things. And now they're nice and bright. Now, this is the second row of LEDs that I'm, I'm putting up. Again, I don't want them to be dimmable. Um, it's really not necessary. But I do want some variability to it. So I have a high and a low beam so to speak. The, out, the switch outside her room where you, where you enter will turn on the lights and depending on whether the inside switch is on or off, you'll have the upper strip of LEDs on. So it's just a matter of connecting them up, running, running some solder, and uh, they'll be all done. It's an easy peasy kind of job. Oops. Well, can't be perfect every time. Minor problem. Now see that white up there where I'm about to point? What I did is about every 8 to 10 inches I ran a bead of white silicone adhesive over the two strips down across the reflector. The idea there is to give it additional bonding so that if the strips do come loose, they can't completely fall off the, uh, the reflector. Now I'm using uh, PL Premium. It's a urethane construction adhesive. And I put that on before I uh, will put the first piece of cold molding on. I like the PL Premium. It's kind of messy to work with, but it gives you a really strong, strong bond. Plus, it helps fill gaps, and I'll explain why that's important later. So we just got to smooth it out a little bit, and then we'll put the cold molding on. Now, the room outside that door is, is my other part of that room that I've been finishing off since I, I started this part with my daughter. She gets a spot, and I get a spot. Now, once I get it all nailed up there, what I'm going to do to clean off that urethane adhesive is I'm using a little bit of mineral spirits on a paper towel. 
and you can see it, it wipes it off very nicely and smooths out any uh, squeeze out so you get a nice edge and now it's just a process of repet repetition now crown molding sucks I hate crown molding I do not profess to be a carpenter and which is why I like the PL premium for this it fills in the corner gaps and it will expand and, and get a good strong bond this is that uh, inside corner molding underneath there now I did scarf joints on all everything and, and, and the crown molding joints are good they're not perfect um, I'm an engineer <laughs> not, a, not a carpenter so don't judge me anyway I use the clamps to hold the joints together so they're they're uh, uniform and consistent my daughter's telling me she'd rather go in and do homework then help me finish so off she goes so it's just like I said it's a uh, a process of repetition now I never I've never been known to be a, a spiffy dresser so don't don't give me grief about my t-shirt or my my work shirt there I caught it on a ladder as I was moving around and tore it but that's okay Again, in those corners, they're not a perfect fit. They're really close, but they're not something I would have in my home. Um, but that urethane allows it to fill in. All I have to do is trim it back a little bit. And when you paint it, you can't tell it's there. And the clamps help keep everything aligned while it cures. And the next day when I came out, I just trimmed off the excess and uh, put a coat of paint on it. Now we're going to hook up the power supply. This is a separate dedicated power supply. Um, it is a 12 volt, 10 amp constant current supply. And it will feed both the power strips. It's more than enough current. And if it's actually enough current so that if I decide I want to put a third strip up there, I actually could and it will handle it just, just fine. The three strips running, running a course are... Um, about 2.2 amps so this could actually handle comfortably four complete rolls up there anyway it's just set in a in a metal box uh, low on the wall out of sight I'll put a vent on it and cover it once I'm done now this is the switch on the inside of the room and it turns on the separate course of lights it's kind of a high low beam and this switch is on the outside and it actually supplies power to the uh, the power supply and it turns on the power supply which of course turns on the lights inside it's actually uh, I'm using 12-2 uh, standard 12-2 wiring it's total overkill for what we're doing we're drawing uh, what um, 5 times 12, 60 watts of power to run these lights. But I have a whole bunch of the uh, 12 2, so I could easily run 14 2 or even less. But none of my none of my barn is going to have LED or none of my barn is going to have fluorescent lights or incandescent. Everything's going to be LED when it's all done. Right now I have a combination of both. But everything's being switched over to LEDs. When I turn on the main bay of my barn, it draws over a thousand watts to light up the room in, in fluorescence. So everything is switching over to LEDs. It's just, they're better light, um, and they certainly save energy. And while I don't get to get out of my barn all the time, when I'm out there, I'm out there all day. And, uh, that's a thousand watts per hour that adds up pretty quick when you're out there 10 12 hours in one day or a weekend maybe 20 hours this is the end result you see the hard edge of the uh, the line okay now there's a single strip 
And here's the bill of materials. I got the crown molding. It came in under budget. Uh, I, I figured it no more than 150, but uh, it worked out really good. I'm really happy with it. Thanks for watching, guys. Are you videotaping still? We're good? No, don't put your fingers in front of it, honey. All right, hit stop. All right, hit stop.